Hello, in this uh, video we will have a look at some typical mistakes which may happen during operating system based embedded application development. Let's start with most common possible issue. What would happen if we will use the same timer, it is by default Sysdic, for HAL library time base management and for FreeRTOS. In FreeRTOS it is used to generate the time slices. If we are generating the code using STM32CubeMX or STM32CubeIDE, we will receive a warning message pre your code generation, but we can still generate the code with those settings. Possible issue during runtime could be improper timing management within the system where we will use HAL library functions. Please remember that within FreeRTOS, Sysdic and Pentest V interrupts are configured with an lowest possible priority. So all operating system functions will freeze those interrupts every time will be in a critical section. In such a case, all planned delays timeouts within HAL based code will be negatively affected, so delayed. Solution for this is selection of different time based timer which would be used for HAL libraries. It can be done with a sys peripheral group in STM32 CubeMX or STM32 CubeIDE. The best choice is either Timer 6 or Timer 7, as those two do not have any input nor output channels. Once we did it, after code generation we can observe a new file, in case of STM32L4 it would be STM32L4XX underscore HAL underscore timebase underscore TIM dot C file which would contain HAL timebase timer functions implementation like HAL init tick to initialize selected timer to 1 millisecond time based timer, HAL suspend tick to stop interrupt generation by time based timer, and HAL resume tick to start interrupt generation by time based timer. Additionally, within STM32L4XX underscore IT interrupt file, there would be a new interrupt vector implementation of selected timer, which would be used to generate our time base for HAL libraries. Next possible problem we may face is once we call the operating system function from interrupt routine. In case we observe no effect of this function execution, we should check its return value. If it is OS error ISR, so this is minus 6, it means that function mustn't be called from interrupt, but only from the task code. As an action, it is necessary to call the function from any task code or change the function, which should be called from the interrupt. Another option is to use interrupt to trigger any task to perform this action instead of the interrupt directly. Another possible problem is related to not properly configured interrupt priorities. Please remember about the split with an interrupt vector into three groups once we are using operating system. The first group is uh, completely independent from the operating system. Those interrupts have a higher priority than config max syscall interrupt priority stored within freertos config.h file and those interrupts are completely not affected by the critical sections used within operating system. The next group, which is uh, specified, is the group uh, which is below config max syscall interrupt priority group, and those interrupts are dedicated to fully cooperate with the operating system by calling its functions. And uh, this is why those interrupts uh, will be blocked uh, by operating system critical sections. And uh, within our coding, we should call operating system functions only from those interrupts, from interrupts from this, gr this group. The third group uh, is um, collecting the interrupts related to scheduler tools. We've got here two of them, it's uh, Sysdic and PentSV. Those interrupts uh, have lowest possible priority to not block other hardware resources of the embedded system. The most common mistake is using interrupt from the first group to call operating system functions. In such a case, once we would perform any modification within operating system, so for example changing the task state, its priority, uh, switching the context, etc., and interrupt with higher priority will come, it will change operating system settings which may result in system crash at the end, as interrupts from the first group are not blocked by the operating system critical sections. It is up to the user to monitor proper level of interrupts uh, which interacts uh, so calling operating system functions. There is a warning mechanism within FreeRTOS as well, it is enabled uh, by default. 
It is enabled by setting config assert with an free RTS config.h file once and the once interrupt with higher priority than max syscall and will be called, will call operating system function, it will land with an vport validate interrupt priority function, where we can implement a corrective action. What could be the root cause of the situation when the task is never selected by the scheduler? There are a few possible scenarios. Task can be in blocked state waiting for other operating system component like queue, semaphore, flag threads or even threads which are either not released or are taken by other task first. It may happen that uh, expected operating system component should be given from interrupt which is either not enabled or blocked. Solution here would be a correction of interrupt priority level or in other action to unblock requested operating system component. Another scenario is that the higher priority task is constantly in run mode. In this case, if it was intended to send this task to the blocked state, please verify whether OS thread yield has not been selected instead of OS delay. Please remember that yield operation is sending task from run to ready state, not to blocked state, but to ready state. In such a case, higher priority task will be selected immediately for execution and uh, lower priority uh, tasks uh, will not uh, be in a run mode. Solution here would be a replacement of yield function to, for example, OS delay 1. The first scenario is that uh, we can use cooperative configuration of up our operating system. We can check it with a freer toys config.h file. In case use preemption option is uh, clearly disabled, it is our case. In such case, uh, an active task will perform its operation still it will decide to finish the job by calling yield or OS delay. So we can observe the situation that other tasks are completely blocked by this. The last uh, scenario I would like to mention here is improper task priority. As we are using CMC SOAS version 2 layer over free RTOS, it may happen that in some areas of the code we will use numerical value of the priority, once in other places we will use OS priority underscore T type def. Please notice that once you are using STM32Cube IDE or STM32Cube MX, you have set 56 priority levels, which is not configurable. It can be changed manually in freeRTOS config.h file with a config max priority field. Please note uh, as well that there is a numerical gap between OS priority idle coded as 1 and next one OS priority low coded as 8. If we select something in between, and within the code we will use other components uh, from this type dev OS priority underscore T, we may face an issue with uh, correct uh, task execution or it's completely blocked from the run state. You can find more information about OS priority underscore T type uh, within CMC's underscore OS section of this uh, training. Sometimes we can face the situation when the task which is waiting for the semaphore is unblocked immediately, even semaphore has been not given yet. There are some possible root causes of such a situation. And the first of them is uh, when there is a too small timeout specified in the function and lack of monitoring of the returned value. Please remember that semaphore and queue await acquire function can wait for the component, uh, so semaphore or queue, for a specified time. It is a last argument in a function. And then after this, uh, those functions return a negative value. It is OS status underscore T type and task continues its execution even the requested object uh, has not been received. So this is important to check the return value of uh, the functions which are waiting for semaphore or queue. And in case we didn't receive uh, them, uh, perform a different action. Another option here would be an increase of a timeout uh, would like to wait for other OS component. Let's consider the second scenario. So non-zero initial number of tokens uh, during semaphore creation. In uh, such a case, it is important to check how the semaphore has been created. Please remember that within OS semaphore new function, we have three arguments. The first one is maximum number of tokens, in case of binary semaphores it is 1. Then it is initial number of tokens, in case there is non-zero value here, it means that semaphore will be available directly after its creation. Sometimes it is, uh, it is let's say, desired state. And the third argument is an address of attributes structure of the semaphore. 
A critical point is uh, this initial number of tokens. In case we don't want to have a semaphore available just after its creation, we should keep this uh, value at zero. And in case we are using the code generators uh, which are setting it to one, we should change it manually within the generated code. There is one potential trap within software timers configuration, which may cause issues with software timers callback execution. The root cause of such situation could be wrong priority assigned to software timer task. By default, it is set to two. It is stored within freertos.config.h file and it is configurable within stm32cubemix and stm32cubeide within freertos configuration. Please have a look that uh, it is set to 2 while there is a gap between 1 and 8 within OS priority underscore T type dev specified within CMC's underscore OS version 2. This is why it is important to change these uh, default settings, uh, default 2, into other value which is uh, in line with other tasks priorities. Otherwise, software timer callback will be not executed as expected or not executed at all. And uh, where we can modify it? We should modify it within freertos.config.h file within field timer underscore task underscore priority field or we can do it the same within freertos configuration using stm32cubemix and uh, or stm32cubeide. Another possible issue is related uh, to too small stack assigned to the task. What are the possible effects? So before code generation, so uh, with an STM32CubeMX or STM32CubeIDE, we will receive a warning that we need to change the size of the operating system heap, so total heap size, within freertos.config.h file or within freertos.config parameters. Once uh, we will have a problem within our code, so for example after local variables declaration within an entry function of the task, uh, we will land in a hard fault interrupt. Solution here is to increase the stack size defined within task creation function. Please remember that the stack size for task is defined in words. Let's uh, assume the situation that uh, the operating system heap size is too small within our application. It is easy uh, if we specify all operating system components at the beginning during project creation. Then in case of operating system heap, when it is too small, STM32CubeMX uh, or STM32CubeIDE will generate a warning so that uh, FreeRTOS heap size tab uh, within FreeRTOS configuration and uh, it will display the, let's say, the requested uh, size of the heap versus a specified one. Uh, so we can correct it quite easily. It is a bit more complex, uh, more difficult uh, to detect such a situation if uh, it will happen during the runtime of the application. And it could happen in case we are creating some operating system components from our code. This would trigger an additional memory allocation which uh, has not been considered at project creation phase. In such a case it is good to monitor return values of all of the functions which are creating uh, new operating system objects. In case uh, the value is this return value zero, it means that the object has not been created due to lack of the memory. In both of the cases, the solution is uh, to increase a total underscore heap underscore space within FreeRTOS configuration. And so it can be config parameters tab within STM32CubeMX or STM32CubeIDE application or manually within FreeRTOS config.h file. Thank you for watching this video.